Hey, Chris, I hope you're doing well. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. Oh, I'm doing well. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, getting ready for uh, Christmas, but uh, practice begins on Friday, and yep, certainly yes, uh, Alabama fans are anticipating uh, uh, the start of maybe a restart for Alabama a little bit. Well, it's you know, it's interesting as uh, college coaches are this time of year. Uh, it is typical in one aspect because you've got the bowl games, and, and they're starting some of the games start this weekend, of course, but the, their practice schedule coincides with uh, obviously when they play their games, and that's staggered. Uh, but then what's thrown into the mix, it's a little different with the early signing period. Um, it's create uh, quite a bit of a challenge particularly for those that have had coaching changes and putting staffs together because um, they're looking at it as signing day is if we've got a commitment from me, we expect you to sign, and if you don't sign, then we're looking elsewhere. So it, this kind of creates a little bit of an interested and interesting environment because we've got signing day right in the middle of it, and, and uh, at least coaches think that this coming Wednesday is going to be the bigger of the two signing days is uh, it's going to allow them to focus on the rest of the class after this week. So it's something that's thrown into the mix right in the middle. I mean, you're going to be sitting there practicing. In some cases, there'll be some teams playing bowl games, Ryan, and then they've got signing day. It's just going to be weird. Chris, you talk to a lot of coaches in the fraternity in the business. Uh, do they like this early signing period? You know, I think a lot of them are not quite sure. I think that they like some aspects of the – here's what they like. They like the fact that if they can get 80% of their class done in December, they don't have to recruit those players from December through February and can focus on the 20% remaining of their class. But I think that they are um, trying to figure out how they're going to handle that with bowl preparation practice and whatnot. It's It's – kind of unique um i wonder if, if if you know listen there's no perfect way I'm, I'm wondering if they couldn't have maybe done this uh maybe a, a week to 10 days maybe something in january i guess they figured that wasn't enough time between uh you know it's only a two three week difference so they truly wanted to have an early signing day but this is going to make it uh, quite interesting uh, maybe they should have had it done uh, a week ago. I, I don't know. I don't know that there's a perfect sign, but there's mixed reviews is the best way I can describe it. It seems like you know, just a big learning curve as we go in. We don't know yeah. exactly how much. I mean, it's sort of like every recruiting analyst I talk to, same thing. They don't really know what to expect. No, and I think that, again, players are going to find out if they don't, they don't sign. If you're committed and you don't sign, that means that, you know, all right, we're going to look elsewhere. Now, if you're talking about an elite player, you know they're going to hold a scholarship for you, but the others are, you know, people. They're they're going to move on too. So, I, I think it is a is a work in progress, and I don't know how if this is to stay or not. I think everybody is going to learn from it and just take it from there. We're talking right now to Chris Landry as we move forward. Uh, Chris, uh, we have spent a lot of time talking about Alabama and his preparations for Clemson. What do you think will work? And, and I know I asked you this last week, but you've had a lot more time to think about Alabama and Clemson from where we talked last time. What do you think Alabama's game plan will be on the offensive side of the football? Well, I think the key is always to figure out how can you most effectively run the football because that's what they do well. Well, running the football, contrary to what people think, is well, you just line up and run it and – you just you know that's going to work. There are different ways you go about it. I, I don't think that if you're Alabama or Clemson or Georgia, for that matter, if you can't run the football, if you're one of those three teams, you're you're not going to be successful. So how do you get to the running game if people are going to going to load up against the run? I think with the advanced game plan or the advanced time to make a game plan, I think. One of the things you try to do against Clemson is to make that defensive front run. I think that they will try to work the screen game, um, the perimeter pass game, the short pass, and force Clemson to spread out a little bit and defend the field horizontally. And if you can do that, um, that they certainly, as you always see in this offense, there's some vertical shots 
when you get the right coverage looks. But I think they want to make this Clemson team spread out and run. You, you, this is a very good defensive front. Very good. I mean, it's very much a lot like Clemson. Uh, excuse me, a lot like Auburn. Um, that they are very athletic. They come after you in waves. They rush the passer. You don't want to sit back in the pocket in third and long and try to make plays against this defense. It's not going to work. So what you have to do is keep them off schedule, and you've got to make them chase. And if you can do that, then you can come back with the run, um, and you get them gashed to where they're they're trying to rush upfield. They're getting a little gassed. Keep them on the field and run the football. I think it's important that they take some chances. They've got to stay on the field offensively. It's what caused them problems in last year's championship game. It's caused them a problem uh, to some degree against Mississippi State, definitely against Auburn, is how do you stay on the field? Well, I think there are different ways that you can do it. Well, you've got to throw the football more. You got Well, listen, that, that's changing your whole identity. What is important is you've got to be able to throw the football with more functionality. How do you do it? Quick passes, simple passes. Um, get the ball in the hands of the playmakers on the perimeter. You do that. Then you've got some built-in RPOs with the quarterback. You've got some run-pass options with the quarterback. Then you can run the football out of some different looks. That's how you have to do it. So I think that the game plan will be with a lot of extra time to try to get Clemson spread out and defending a lot of things horizontally. Then I think take some vertical chances. That opens up the running game, and for Alabama to be successful, they're going to have to be able to run the football. That's how you stay on the field and you control the game. Um, you do that, that's what I think Alabama. You know, Alabama with a lot of time to prepare is a tough nut to crack. And the more and more I think about it, I can sit there and make a strong case for Clemson in this game athletically, personnel-wise. Lots of talent on defense. They're definitely uh, a little bit stronger in some areas and a little bit deeper. But there are a couple of things that come – to me, it keeps coming back. A, this amount of time to allow A, Alabama to heal up and get a lot of those defenders back, one, and B, getting this much time to prepare a game plan, that is to the edge, and I think big edge, Nick Saban. So that's where I think it's going to be interesting and why this matchup is going to be a really good one. Now, Clemson's been here before. They've matched up and played well against Alabama, but to match up against them with this much time with Alabama to prepare is a little bit of a different animal, and I can't wait to see how they adjust to what Bama does. I know this is probably a 30-minute response, but why is Nick Saban so good when he's given so much time to break it down and come up with that perfect game plan? Because you look at it, when you give in this much days, I mean, we've got 19 days away uh, from, from right now, 19 days away from – uh, Alabama and Clemson, why is Nick Saban so good in those moments? Well, a lot of different head coaches are different types. Like, for example, Dabo Sweeney is not a great X's and O guy. Dabo Sweeney is really good with people. He's a really good recruiter. He's a really good at delegating to the staff. What Nick Saban does that is a little bit unique is that he is a very good evaluator of film in that he can break down his team and to the nth degree give a good view of how teams will likely attack us. And, of course, they have a staff of people that do certain things in terms of putting together data and film breakdowns. But Nick can say, this is how they're going to play us, and this is what we need to do. Um, And so, in essence, what I'm talking about is self-scouting. He can do that and add a touch to it from a head coaching standpoint and with the power and control to be able to say, this is what we need to do. That's a little bit different. And not to change the philosophy, that's not going to change, but a little bit of how we attack this opponent based upon how they anticipate that opponent, being Clemson, is going to attack them. That's where he is a little bit different in, in, a, in an edge. Um, and that's, that's kind of on the NFL level what Belichick does is he has a game plan that morphs a little differently. Now, Nick is a little bit more stick to to what his philosophy is because Alabama, like in college football, you win a little bit more as a program on how you do things and 
how you're able to develop talent, whereas the NFL is more game-by-game situational. But when you have extra time and you're playing up against talented teams, which Alabama's facing this more talented team, the ability to be able to identify, okay, we got some protection issues. We're not as good up front as we have been on the offensive line. How are we going to defend um, certain situations that Clemson's going to put uh, up against us uh, defensively? But then also, here's how they're going to attack our protections, and here's where we've been weak. And I think some of those things he can point out. It's no different than when he lined up against a great defense a few years ago in the BCS era against LSU, a team that, you know, quite frankly, uh, did not play Alabama but beat L- Alabama in Tuscaloosa in the 9-6 to game. And he came out, and what did they do? They came out and they threw on the perimeter. They attacked him. They knew they weren't going to be able to run right at LSU. But if they work the perimeter, get them spread out, then you're going to find a way to get the running game going, and that's what he did. I think that's what he does a little bit better than other people is that he can identify from a strategic standpoint with his film breakdown. He gives another set of eyes, and the most important set of eyes, that he can really bring into a staff meeting and say, this is some things that we've got to do in our game plan that's going to make us better. So that extra pair of eyes is is big, and on top of being a great recruiter and a great uh, program developer, that's something that he can bring. That's when he brings his edge uh, of being a coordinator. The, it, from, a, from the eyes of a head coach, he can kind of go back to his coordinator days and say, this is what we need to do on both sides of the ball, really in all three phases, to make us a little better. Remember uh, the, the championship game a couple of years ago and, and how they were able to come up with some things on special teams and some big plays and the onside kick, you know, he's he's in, immaculately prepared for those type of situations. What if we got to steal an extra possession? Um, you know, whether it's a, a fake punt to keep the ball against an LSU or the onside kick because they needed an extra possession to to be able to beat Alabama, uh, excuse me, Clemson two years ago when they they couldn't stop him. It's things like that that the extra time allows him to prepare for. And don't fool yourself. He is because of their large staff. He's got people prepared. He's got a group of people that's working on Georgia and a group of people that are working on Oklahoma. They're putting together stuff in anticipation. If they do win, it's not like they're going to be starting. They're going to prepare for both, and obviously with the winner of that game, they're going to focus on that team, and they they will already have a – a jump uh, on uh, who they're going to play if they're able to beat Clemson. We're talking to Chris Landry, LandryFootball.com, as we move forward. Chris, I, I want to go back here just for a couple of minutes. Uh, we are a caller-friendly program here, and we hear from a lot of callers, and, and I've asked them, you know, what's your, uh, you know, your positives, your negative, what does Alabama need to do? They talk about running the football, but they say that Alabama has not run the football enough. Now, that's from amateur eyes like myself and – uh, many of the callers that just look at it from from that perspective. Do you feel like Alabama has not run the football as much as their strengths of this team uh, would allow? Well, I think in certain situations that has been true. I think overall you got to understand that when not many times that Alabama gets what we call behind schedule, so to speak. You know, normally they play game control and they can control the game. But like against Auburn, for example, uh, they were they did not have the ability to run the football. They were losing the line of scrimmage. That's where the problem was. They got beat at the line of scrimmage, and they got beat handily at the line of scrimmage. And so they didn't have the ability to run the football, and they got behind, and they had they were kind of playing from a chase position. So those things, I think, contributed to some of that. Now, specifically... When people say, well, they don't run the football enough, well, that's a generic statement. Tell me where in the situation, and I can more you know, adequately say, yeah, I, you know, I agree with that. When you run the football and where you throw the football is dictated on a number of things. It's dictated on the front and coverage that you're seeing. So you go in with the idea that you may want to run the football, but if they're going to overplay the run, load the box against the run, that creates some opportunities to make some plays in the passing game. Ideally, what Alabama wants to do with their offense is they want to be able to score and points often come out of the passing game, and if they can get an early lead, then they can more adequately 
finish the game with the running game. So they want to get points out of the passing game and then want to be able to work the running game and be able to wear down an opponent and protect the lead. That's the formula for them uh, to be successful. When they can't do that as uh, effectively against certain opponents, um, they struggle with that. And so can they, you know, you can run the football, but if you get into third and long situations and you don't dominate the line of scrimmage, then you get in third and long and you put your defense back on the field. Well, then all of a sudden you're on the field more and more and more, and then your great defense is no longer great because they're dead late, and that's what happened in the championship game against Clemson. So uh, I think being able to run the football is what they absolutely want to do, but in order to do that, they've got to control the line of scrimmage a little bit better, and quite frankly, um, they've not, uh, they struggled to control the line of scrimmage, particularly against Auburn, but to some degree against Mississippi State and LSU, that may have gone a little unnoticed by some people, um, that watch the game but don't study it because they won those games. Everything's fine when you win it, but uh, they weren't. They were not as dominant up front on the offensive line, and that is a problem. It is a concern, and it is something that they're going to have to work around because they're they're going to face a really good defensive front against Clemson. And if they were to win the game, uh, depending on what happens in the other semifinal, potentially a really good defensive front in Georgia. Uh, Chris, I, I feel like each and every Wednesday we're sort of just picking your brain and looking for more information. I'll, I'll continue. Uh, is Clemson the best defensive Alabama will face this year? You know, I think that Auburn's defense it matches up pretty well. Uh, I think in the secondary they do some things uh, a little bit better, but I think in terms of athleticism up front, I think it's probably as good as they faced. Yeah, Um so it's right up there, but but I, I think Auburn's right there with them, um, and I think they're very similar. Chris, but if Alabama's had trouble on that line of scrimmage, as you've talked about, then then this is not a good recipe for an Alabama W. Well, it's not, certainly if they don't play it differently. But, you know, I'll, I'll make this case, too. Um, Georgia lined up against Auburn and, and really got walloped. And, you know, one of the things, and I do a number of shows like this, and one of the things I talked about with the Georgia fans and the Atlanta stations and whatnot is, well, what are they going to do up against Auburn? We got no shot against Auburn in the second time, and, and what do you do differently? And I said, well, one of the things that, Auburn, that Georgia's got to do against this Auburn defensive front is they've got to work the screen game. They've got to, they've got to force Auburn's defense to run and, and, um, and stay uh, on the field. And, and they were able to do that effectively. Now, there's a big difference is that Auburn's running game offensively could not sustain and run the football as well as they did in that first matchup against Georgia. So their defense is back on the field. On the field for more snaps, what happens, right? I mean, you get worn out. So Georgia was able to wear Auburn out in the second game. So that's how things can change. So, you know, I would make the, the submission that if Alabama, and they were not healthy, and you can't look at it simply as, well, the offense against the defense. Well, Alabama's defense is getting worn down a little bit, too, in that game against a really good Auburn running attack. So now you have to look at this game and how it matches up against Clemson. Well, how they're able to match up defensively against Clemson, this is not a dynamic passing attack of Clemson like they faced last year against uh, Deshaun Watson. So if they're able to get off the field defensively and force Clemson's defense on the field for more snaps, then all of a sudden, the more times you have against this Clemson defense, just like Georgia had against Auburn's defense, better chance of wearing them out. So it's not as simple as, well, they can't block them up front. No, I think there are some problems blocking Clemson's defensive front. So how do you deal with it? Again, not to be repetitive, but I think you have to work the perimeter, the quick screen game, the bunch passes, force them to chase, and then defensively get off the field. Stop them and force that Clemson defense back on the field again. You do it again and again, and all of a sudden, that defense is not as good uh, at snap 72 as they are at snap 42. You get worn down. That's where I think the key is, is Alabama's offense is going to be augmented, will have to be augmented by their defensive performance. If they can get off the field defensively, force Clemson's defense back on the field, 
then all of a sudden you've got a chance to have more success. Alabama's offense is about wearing people out. And if you can stay on the field enough offensively, that's key. Now, a couple of things. They're going to have to be more efficient in the passing game. They're going to have to be more efficient with their RPOs. They're going to have to move the pocket a little bit more. They're going to have to work the screen game a little bit better and um, work the perimeter pass on early downs. you got to do that. Stay in third and shorts. Give you some options on third down. You don't have many options on third and seven. Third and seven, you got a waste run that you hope you can break a couple of tackles or you're lining up um, in the pocket or some run pass options where the pass rush is coming in your face. Not a good percentage play. But I think if you do some of those things differently and defensively you're a better team, make no mistake that had Alabama been in better shape defensively to get off the field against Auburn, they would have eventually had more success against Auburn's defense. But they never could do it. Why? Because Auburn's defense remained fresh. Auburn controlled the game at the line of scrimmage. Auburn ran the football and kept Alabama's defense on the field. That's how... The offense and the defense are interconnected, and they're both connected to the special teams. It's called complementary football. Alabama usually dominates that. And quite frankly, they, they, that chain was broken against Auburn. That's what has to come together and tighten up against Clemson to be the difference. Well, going back, is that what Clemson did against Alabama last year? Yes, absolutely. Look at what happened. Al- uh, Alabama defense played, what, was it 98, 99 snaps of yes, defense? Yes, 99, yep. How are you going to be a dominant defense at 90 snaps? You're not. Um, they were on skates at the end. You know, it wasn't, you know, I hear people say, oh, that great defense didn't show up. You know, that's like, that's like saying, okay, line up, we're going to run a 40-yard dash after you ran a marathon. Well, you're not going to run the – you could be the fastest guy, but if you just ran 10 miles, you're not going to be the same guy. You, you know, that's the difference. They faced an offense that was very difficult to defend, a mobile quarterback that really was great with play extensions and ate him up in the passing game. Um, and they had to match points. And to a large degree, they did. They were able to move the football, but they weren't able to stay on the field quite as much offensively, and their defense was on the field way too much. And it cost them. There's no doubt about it. And so, you know, if they were able to get off the field a little bit more, then that's the difference. Now, the where I see Clemson is a little different is I don't see them as being a dominant passing game. I, there's, there's not a Deshaun Watson there. There's a good quarterback, but to me, I think Alabama and Clemson are very similar in terms of maybe limited in the passing game to some degree, but could run the football very good on defense. I think Alabama's a little more physical defensively. I think Clemson is a little bit more athletic defensively. But I think this matchup is pretty even, and I think it's going to come down to, hey, who can get some stops and force some third and longs, and who has more possessions on offense to wear down a defense. That's the offense that's going to have more success because as you do that and you force more defenders into the box, that's where the passing game is going to have success by Clemson or by Alabama is when you have to overplay the opposition's run game, that takes the safety out of the middle of the field. You can't play split safeties. Then you got a problem. Um, that's when you can start to make plays in the passing game because both of these offenses have really good receivers. But if you can line up and split safeties and you can play the run with seven, you you can defend the, this passing game, but both Alabama and Clemson's passing game. But when you have to bring a safety down in the box, then that makes it a little bit more advantageous to take shots in the passing game and have success. Chris, which way are you leaning? I know we're 19 days away, but which way would uh, you Alabama. Lean? Okay. I'm leaning Alabama because of the preparation and the help. And I want to, as I see as many of these seven of those guys coming back in time to prepare, I'm leaning Alabama. I am. Um you know, I think this Clemson team last year was better, but um, the the two reasons that I've mentioned. In fact, I don't I don't know unless there is a lot of negative response coming out of injuries. You know that that those guys are not going to be back. I I'm leaning Alabama. I think the time to prepare and the guys coming back on defense are the difference in this game because I think 
that the offensive success is going to come off the team that, again, defensively can control this game and force the opposing defense to stay on the field more. And I think that Alabama has a much better chance at doing that. As opposed to not being able to do it against Auburn, I think they have a better chance to do it with better help. Now, if you're telling me some of those guys and you know, half of them are not coming back and they're missing those guys, then, then I would I would flip and say, you know what, I'd, I'd give a little edge towards Clemson. But at full strength, all hands on deck, um, particularly with Nick Saban preparing and that staff preparing with this much time, I'm giving them an advantage. Chris Landry, I mean, you feel like not only a college football expert, but, I mean, you're a therapist here in Tuscaloosa. I mean, you're calming no, us well, down a little bit. I don't know about bit. that. I mean, you know, my, that opinion and, you know, uh, what <laughs> what is it What is it now? For, I was used to saying a quarter will buy you a cup of coffee. You, good luck finding a cup of coffee for a quarter. What is it, $4 today? Uh, it's just an opinion, and, and well, you got to go out and play it, and you can be the better team. And I don't think there's much that separates these teams, but I think people are kind of just assuming if you look at the Alabama team that got beat by Auburn and got, got, got taken to the wire by Mississippi State, if you're looking at that team, then, then you absolutely got to like Clemson. But I don't think you're looking at that team. I think that people are kind of forgetting who's coaching them and who's coming back. That, to me, makes a difference. That's why I'm not saying it because I'm, I'm not going to go on a, a Clemson, you know, a South Carolina station and say anything different. That's, that's what I believe. I, I believe right now that Alabama, that the time is uh, to prepare is a, a big big uh, separator in my view well and I also think this and this will be the final thing is knowing Nick Saban and the competitor that he is he was hurt after losing that championship okay I I know uh people and I know you do as well he took that one personal because you know he, he might have let it, you know a couple things slip knowing the competitor in Nick Saban uh that's going to be the drive that he's going to pull you know 20 21 hour days to get ready for Dabo and, and the Clemson Tigers They'll be prepared. They've got the manpower to prepare it. Um, and I think, you know, we, we've kind of assumed that, hey, well, they're not that good and, you know, they're not as good as they have been. And uh, none of that, they're not playing. You know, people say, well, they're not as good as uh, this team or that team. Well, they're not playing those teams. They're playing the teams this year. And I think that Clemson is good, but not as good as last year. Both teams will be prepared. Both teams will play well. And I'm not going to be surprised if Clemson wins, but I expect Alabama to win um, because of the reasons that I mentioned. Uh, I just believe that preparation is one. And two, I think defensively this is going to be a really good team uh, that's going to have a lot of weapons at, it, at their disposal on defense. And I think they'll cause some problems for Clemson. And in a close game, I think they get the, they get the possession of the football a little bit more and ultimately crack the cold and get a little more points out of it.